G'day, I'm Alistair Christie from LearnDelphi.tv. Uh, go to my website and you can find lots of uh, free videos, a uh, complete list there, and also some ones you can buy. Today we're going to perform the Bowling Game Code Counter. This kata is used to help understand test-driven development and can be performed in many languages. But today we're going to do it in Delphi. I first learned about this kata from Robert C. Martin, or Uncle Bob as is also known, in one of his videos on his cleancoders.com website. Or if you have a Safari subscription, you already have access to it. I highly recommend these videos as their content is excellent, if not a bit quirky. You can also search for it on YouTube and see it performed by a variety of people in a number of different programming languages. Firstly, it would help if you understood the rules of scoring a bowling game. Here is a brief outline. A game consists of 10 frames, where you get two attempts to knock down up to 10 pins. You get a point for each pin that you knock down. If you knock down all 10 pins with two rolls in a single frame, this is called a spare. You get the points for these rolls plus the points for from your next roll. If you knock down all 10 pins in a single roll, this is called a strike. You get the 10 points from the strike plus the points from your next two rolls. If you roll a spare or a strike in the final frame, you'll get a total of three rolls for that frame. And with that, we can now begin. We are going to begin by creating a new DUnitX project in the DUnitX folder. And I'm going to create a setup and teardown methods, which we'll be using shortly, but not initially. I'm called T Game Test. And I don't need to create the uh, simple test methods because I don't know how to create those fairly easily. And here we have uh, our beginnings of our test project. So let's just save the project off into game test. And we've got game test project. Okay, so the most basic thing we can possibly do or test is can we actually create a game? And the answer presently is no. Oops, page down key. So, and if we attempt to compile this, it will of course fail. We can see that's going to fail. There is no, um, is no T game declared. So we need to do that. And the first thing we'll do is create a new unit. And I'll call it game. It's a class and I'll just uh, define public and protected sessions for now, sections for now. And we can now, uh, ah, of course, can't do that because we actually need to use it. And there we go. There is our very first test, test passed. The next thing we want to implement. Can we actually bowl a ball or roll it, roll a ball down the um Okay, so this is gonna look very similar to this, and I'm gonna copy and paste, which is a bad sign. Uh, but we'll worry about fixing it up very shortly. And we'll try g.roll, 
role, and we don't have a role method, so we want to implement one. In fact, we should um, test them that we can indeed cannot compile. Um, and there's our um, rolling a ball, and we, the number of pins we're knocking down. So now, oh, and we need implementation for that, of course. And we'll roll and knock down one pin. Okay, now I've got two tests. And at this point, we see that we've got some uh, common code. So we've, uh, in between our uh, writing a failing test and then getting that test to pass, the next step is to refactor the code and tidy it up. And so what I'm going to do is move this uses up to the top here. And take that out. So that becomes a private uh, member. And then in our setup, create our game, and in our teardown, free it. And so we're now left with that. And do the tests still pass? Yes, they do. And now we have a redundant test, which we can actually eliminate. This does happen from time to time, that uh, tests become uh, redundant. And in fact, this can roll uh, method will also be redundant later on. So now we actually want to bowl the game. So the uh, simplest game we can uh, play is a game where we don't knock down E pins at all. That is, uh, every ball that we roll goes into the gutters, one, one or the other. So, oops. So that's our gutter game test. So basically, we now want to roll. Uh, we're going to bowl 20 balls, and none of them will knock down any pins. So for i equals 1 to 20, uh, g dot roll 0, and here's our first assert r equal 0 and g dot score. And Oh no, we have no score function. So let's uh, implement that. Because uh, of course we can't compile presently because we have no G score. So let's return minus one for now. That will give us a failing test. So we got minus one. So we know this test is being called, uh, so I can now make that pass by returning zero. And our test pass, and we're back to two tests. So um, is there any refactoring we can do? And I don't think there is at this stage. So let's write our next test. So the next most basic uh, game we could play would be perhaps rolling all ones. So I'm just going to take this, and because I'm getting a pasting as indication that we are going to be refactoring later, and if we bowl all ones, our score is going to be 20. And we run that, and we get a failing test. So we expect a 20, but got zero. So uh, basically, now we need to record some state. We need to know um, what we've been bowling. So what we'll do is we'll have a, oops, have that page down again. Uh, have an F score, uh, and that of course is initialized to zero. 
and when we roll we increase our, our score by the number of pins we've knocked down and so that becomes result and run that and indeed we get oops, we get our test passing so let's save off our uh, our progress so far and we notice that we've got some repeated code here uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a roll mini function which so I'll just leave it there for now. So from one to count, and we want to roll pins. So we can now change this. Then zero pins twenty times. So that all goes, and as does that. Okay, and we verify that it still works. And yes, indeed it does. So let's uh, save that again. So the next test we want to write is uh, one spare so uh, to, to, for a spare we uh, we need to knock down 10 pins in two sort of in a single frame two sec consecutive bowls uh, and then we need another another roll to knocking down pins to verify that the um, algorithm is correctly calculating the, uh, the correct score for the number of pins and we want to assert uh, equal and so for our spare we're getting uh, 10 for our next ball we're getting a 3 and then it counts twice because because of the spare so it's 16 And we've got a failing test, surprise, surprise. So we've got 13, but expected is 16. And I'll save that again. So now things are a little bit more complicated. So when we roll as in a single frame, if we knock down 10 pins, uh, we need to also record what the next ball is. So if we have a look at our code, so in here we need to know what the previous ball, ball was and what the next ball is uh, or next roll uh, and that's a little bit difficult what we need to do probably is record um, all the uh, pins that have been knocked down and then iterate through them so let's, let's do that uh, but we've got a failing test presently so what I'm going to do is come up to one spare and go ignore so we can run that now we've got one ignore test so we're all passing at the moment and we're going to do a bunch of refactoring so we're no longer going to have this score instead we're going to have rolls which is it's an array of 1 to 21 and it's 21 because we can have uh, there are 10 frames, so that's uh, 20 balls, 20 rolls. Uh, but in the last frame, we can actually have uh, roll 3 rather than just 2, so that's a total of 21. 
so in roll we now want to go count roll and then we need to define current roll uh, can't use control shift D because uh, Camtasia's uh, so clear current roll integer and that goes from one and current roll is going to default to um, zero so current roll is assigned one and So basically we're just filling our array with each each ball and then we want to iterate over the array. So let's we start with result being zero. Let's go from one to twenty-one. I'll be a bit lazy here. And I think result by and hopefully if I've written all that correctly the tests will pass and yes they do so that was a successful refactor and let's go back to thinking about Oops. okay so we're back to our failing test so let's think uh, a little bit more about this so basically we want to know uh, if there were two rolls in a row that total 10 um, but they've got to be in the same frame so uh, this is still this is still not quite right uh, what we really want to do is iterate over each frame so I'm going to go back to doing a bit more refactoring and reset that to ignore and just run that and confirm that we are indeed in a passing state. So let's just adjust this um, for frame is assigned 1 to 10 because there are 10 frames to begin. Now normally a frame consists of two balls so I'm going to shift this out to here. So ink it by that roll and the next roll. Now uh, we need to initialize i to 1. And then we want to increment it. by 2. So this is the current ball plus the next ball uh, and then we increment our i. So uh, it should still compile and run. Yes, we're good. But um, this i variable is not particularly uh, clear. So let's rename that to roll index. And save all that off. Okay, it should still compile and run. And yes, it does. So we can come back and remove that ignore. And we have our failing test, and so let's make our test pass. So we need to detect if it's a spare. So if these two rolls equal 10, we have a spare.
Okay. So, in this case, we want to ink increment. Well, it's very similar to that, isn't it? But um, actually, we already know that they total 10. And we also want to add the following uh, role. So, roles plus 2. And then increment y2. So we run that, and hurrah, we get a passing test. So uh, our next stage, if we save everything off again, is to refactor. And I'm going to start with uh, refactoring that out. Unfortunately, uh, Delphi doesn't extract uh, functions, so I'm just going to manually, in fact, I'll just copy that. And I want to write. And of course it's going to return a billion. And that becomes and we then no longer need that comment and run it. And it still passes. Hurrah. And save that off. So our next test one strike. So this time we knock down ten pins in a single single roll. And then we need two more rolls to, to test our logic for uh, our strike. So we'll bowl a three and a four. Ah, oh, and then I suppose technically speaking, and what I should have done with the um, the spare is not that it really matters. But uh, roll many, uh, number of pins zero, and in this case there are 17 bowls left uh, because we've rolled three, and then zero pins, and we've done two frames, so that means 16 bowls left. And the score from the set of rolls is we get 10 uh, plus the next two bowls which is 7 plus the next two bowls again uh, per, per normal so that's 24 and hopefully we'll get just one failing test we do our one strike we expected 24 but only got 17 so we come back to our uh, our game logic, our scoring logic, and so uh, if it's a strike, so if um, equals 10, we're going to have some other logic. So it's going to look very similar to this, so I'm just going to copy that for now. So it's going to be 10 for our strike, plus the next two balls, which is actually roll index plus 1, and roll index plus 2. Oops. And this time we only want to increment by 1, because we've only got one ball. So hopefully, if I've written that correctly, 
Yay, five passing tests. So let's save that off and that off. Can we do any refactoring? Well, this is obviously is strike. So I'm going to go up. And the logic for that is that there. Okay. So do we still uh, pass our tests? Yes, our refactoring was successful. Okay, and then we've got some bits and pieces in here that we can uh, redo. So that there is uh, the next two balls uh, for a strike. So uh, if I create a function which um, and that's going to take a roll index as a parameter. But this time it's going to return an integer. Okay, and this is the next ball for a spare. So uh, it's going to have a very similar signature to that one. Next ball for spare. And the result of that is that. Copy that, paste that there, and let's copy the roll index. Okay, and from there, one last thing we've got. Uh, this is this is a single frame, so we might call that two balls in frame. result is going to be that. Okay, and still passing, still passing, fantastic. Okay, let's save that off. Back up to the top. So next test. Uh, perfect game. This is if you roll a strike every single time. And we're going to be knocking down 10 pins. And how many times are we going to do it? Uh, well, there are 10 frames. So there's, there's 10 uh, plus in the last frame if you bowl 10, you get, to, you get two more bowls basically. So if we uh, effectively knocking down 10 pins 12 times. So, uh, and this of course should fail. And yet it passes. Uh, why does it pass? Well, save that. And it passes because this is the algorithm for calculating the uh, score for bowling. So it effectively it is uh, one for loop plus two uh, if statements. And we're going to handle three, three different cases, the if we roll a strike, if you roll a spare, or uh, if we just 
uh, knock down less than 10 pins in a, in a single frame. So um, that's it. We are done.